Hi, I'm Renee Hobbs. Welcome to EDC 534. Uh, this is the spring 2019 semester, and I am very delighted to be joined by uh, Lauren, Jessica, Cynthia, Brian, and Pam. Um, and that means, um, let's see, Lynn, uh, Michelle, um, Kathleen, Emily, uh, Robert, Ashley, we're sorry you're not here. Maybe you're going to join us in a few minutes, or maybe you're going to watch this uh, recording. Um, but um, in just the next 60 minutes, I have a whole lot of goals for this class. And the most important thing is, of course, to introduce you to, like, what's the learning experience all about? Um, so that means we're going to... Um, kind of go over the syllabus. We're going to kind of try to imagine the arc of the uh, semester. Uh, and you're going to get a chance to ask all the questions that you want to ask so that you feel comfortable and confident about taking this course. But before we begin, we might as well go around the room and introduce ourselves. That's half the fun of having an online class like this. I want you to know, oh, give me a thumbs up if this is your first time using the Zoom. Yeah, okay, so very nice. So up at the top corner there on the uh, right-hand side, you're going to see a thing that says speaker view. And then it also, there's like a little like a telephone keys, and that's called gallery view. So you're in control of what you see. You can see the person who's speaking, and that'll change automatically depending on who's talking. Or you can see like the tiles of all, like there's six of us here who are right now. So you can uh, go back and forth between those as uh, we speak. But why don't we just go around the room and tr uh, try to introduce ourselves. Basically, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, why you're taking this class, what you do. Uh, yeah, who wants to go first? I think I'll go first because I'm probably gonna be the first to leave. Uh, so, uh, I'm Brian uh, Turnbow. I teach at West Chicago High School, a uh, suburb about 30 miles west of Chicago. Um, I teach um, AP language. I teach an interdisciplinary class, all, all levels. I've done freshman global studies. I'm teaching world studies this year. I've taught American studies. It's kind of a team taught class. Uh, I also developed the media literacy uh, course there as well. So, um, Obviously, I'm really big on that. Uh, and uh, I also, uh, along with Lauren, uh, attended the, um, uh, the, uh, the session this summer at the, uh, at the campus for uh, digital literacy. And so I'm just kind of working our way through the, uh, the program. So that's me. So glad you're here. Okay, yeah. Lauren, he kind of threw to you, so it's your turn. That's perfect. Hi, Brian. Nice to see you. Um, so uh, I'm Lauren Hopkins, and I am a 17-year teacher, uh, English and literacy at the high school level. Um, also working uh, this year, I started last year as a reading interventionist, so I'm doing that at my school as well. I uh, just started my master's program. Actually, Renee, yours was the first class in my master's this summer, so it was a great kickoff. Um, and I'm really excited to be, you know, kind of into the program now and um, I'm also working, there's a, a teacher at my school, Matt Taiba, who completed the certificate in digital literacy last year. So we've actually been teaming up um, and collaborating and offering some professional development at our school, which is awesome. So welcome, uh, it's nice to, nice to see everybody. Wow, Lauren, so that's a great example of the kind of leadership uh, competencies that we're like dreaming, we hope are really happening and you're making me realize, oh yeah, they are, they are. Okay, Jessica, you're next. Can you introduce yourself to us, please? Hi, my name is Jessica Cabral. Um, I work in uh, Cranston Public School as a TA right now. Um, I'm a wife, a mother of three that keep me very busy. And um, I have a year left of grad school to be a library teacher. Aha! So are you going to be getting the school library certification? Yes. Got it. Okay, wonderful. So you're moving your way through the program. That's yes. fantastic. Uh, next up, I see Scott. Scott, welcome. <clears throat> and, uh, can you introduce yourself to us? Yes, hi. Can, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm Scott Worler from uh, CCRI. I'm a biology professor, and we're working to uh, create some online uh, courses and laboratories. And uh, I just want to, you know, uh, work on my skills, my um, uh, media skills, digital skills, stuff like that before I get too far into it. 
Um, I've had some experience with some online and uh, I just want to expand it a bit. So uh, I thought this would be a great course. Awesome. We're so glad you're here. Uh, Pam Snyder, you're next. Can you introduce yourself to us? Oh, Pam, you are, you are, you are muted. Unmute yourself first. There it is, down the bottom left. <laughs> I'm getting digital literate. <laughs> I'm Pam Steger. Um, I live in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, I have a background in prevention of uh, substance abuse, uh, violence prevention, um, sexually transmitted diseases, you name it, I tried to prevent it. Um, that led me to um, uh, media literacy, which I have a real passion for. Uh, so uh, I'm also a writer and I'm really interested in this course because I wrote a column in a traditional weekly newspaper for 15 years and I'd like to start writing online and doing other creative stuff online. So uh, digital authorship sounded perfect to me. And Pam, we have to tell our colleagues here that we are co-authors and this um, April or May, sometime soon, June. our book is coming out. What's it called, Pam? It's called The Library Screen Scene and it will um, hopefully be both a textbook for library information science graduate students and working librarians to encourage them to make better use of their digital collections and resources. Oh, I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to hold that book in my hat. Me too. So, yes, and, and then I'm glad you're thinking on to the next project. Okay, <laughs> next up is Kathleen Jackson. Kathleen, can you introduce yourself to us? Sure. Um, Kathleen Jackson. Uh, by day, I'm a career advisor uh, at the University of Rhode Island in the College of Business. And I guess then and all other times, I just love to learn. Um, I took level one of the digital literacy certificate program this past summer. Um, it changed my life. Um, I think it made uh, or made me less fearful of all the techniques and and things that they are out, are out there so that I can become more literate. Um, and I just wanted that next step. And so I think this course is that. Um, in a brief conversation with you and looking at everything online, I see that there's a little bit of digital storytelling coming up, um, which is a passion of mine. Um, and so I'm just excited to be in the class and to learn as much as I can. I think we're all going to learn from each other this semester, and so in a way, it's going to be exciting to see what we bring to the party. Uh, Lynn, I see you. Here you are. Can you introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. All right. I'm unmuted. Um, my name is Lynn Adams. I live in South Berwick, Maine. Um, I was a classroom teacher for 20 years, and um, then we had our son, and I'm home with him now. And I'm working very part time on my um, master's in library information science. Um, I think digital literacy and media literacy are so important. Um, and I'm very excited to be taking this class. We're glad you're here because it allows us to say we're from Maine to Chicago. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. A lot of good Rhode Islanders in the middle. So it's wonderful. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so. Um, uh, what I want to do is, I think what's cool is that you guys being the overachievers that you have, I can already see that you have like prepared yourselves for this online learning experience and that's really exciting. But in some ways, I uh, wanted to give you a little bit of like the design philosophy behind this course. So you are kind of think thinking about like why we're doing it this way. Why are we doing, why are we, why is the course designed in this particular way? Um, so you've of course found the digitalauthorship.org website and this is really the um, public face of the course. What I found over the years is that lots of people are trying to figure out how to teach these new topics. And so I'm really committed to my own scholarship and teaching being open. And so I try to 
make that public uh, during the course of the semester. So here, at, at, um, each week, you'll find when when you go to the this is this is the home page, right? Each week, you'll see a new box open that will kind of reflect what we're doing in today's class, right? And that'll be where I kind of keep my own outline notes for what the class is all about. You've probably also already found the syllabus. And if you have found the syllabus, of course, you might be the kind of, uh, you know, you might be the good old fashioned type who wants to see it in like paper format. And the paper format, I think I've already opened that up. Uh, the paper format is just a PDF version of this class. But I've created a lot of redundancy here. So uh, you can also kind of scroll down on this page and see uh, the syllabus. And you can directly open up the, well, what are we doing each week, right? And go to the course schedule. Um, but uh, one of the things that I found in teaching an online class is that you guys are busy professionals and um, trying to squeeze in graduate school in addition to your full-time your full-time lives and so while I really uh, fundamentally have some problems with learning management systems like Sakai or Moodle or um, Blackboard uh, I have found one that I I think is pretty good and and most of you have already found it it's called Pathright. Pathright is, is nice because it's beautiful and simple it allows us to sort of keep track of the, the essentially the learning tasks right because most of what we're going to be doing together is like an, in a kind of a conversation um, so this allows us to sort of talk to each other in kind of a, a systematic way and so we'll talk a little bit more about that near the end of the hour when you kind of get ready for thinking about what do you have to do for next week um, but I thought it would be useful at least for to call attention to a couple of things about the syllabus that I want you to uh, I want to underline and notice right now I'm I've I've opened up a version of the syllabus. Oh, give me a thumbs up if you can actually see that. I need to make sure I haven't didn't done a check to see. Can you actually see that? Um, so right now I've opened up a tool called Cami, and Cami is a, a Chrome application that allows for digital annotation. We're going to be using Cami this semester because it's a really great way to have a collaborative reading experience and um, so uh, let's see if I can share this can I share this document with you I need to upload to link to get the link to the document and then I'm gonna copy that link and over here in the um, it's called the um, chat room see if you can find the chat room um, see if you can find the chat room in uh, Zoom, and then uh, open up the Cami uh, by just clicking on that Google link. Okay, and I'll kind of wait for you to show up here. So Cami is a really cool application. It's very easy to use, and what's awesome about it is that it allows for us to have a collaborative note-taking space. So you all know that this course is part of the Graduate Certificate in uh, Digital Literacy. Uh, Julie Quiwer and I are really proud of that program. And the broad goals of that program include gaining knowledge, uh, gaining experience in composing texts using digital media tools, and understanding how digital media tools, texts, and technologies reshape the nature of knowledge impact personal and social relationships, and alter organizational practices in the workplace, school, and community, right? So um, 
one of the things that we're imagining that this program really is a, a leadership development program that you begin to think of yourself as a change agent to supporting digital literacy uh, wherever you encounter it. Now, what's going on with your link? Have you found my link? Oh yes, you have. And quite a few of you guys are already on it. And I can see that because down here at the bottom of the page are your little icons, right? So I think one of the things that's really fascinating about being a reader today is this idea that we have these different tools that we're using. We use the tools in different contexts like work and for fun. Uh, we're using different symbol systems like image and sound and interactivity. We're communicating across different modes like persuading, informing, and entertaining. We're using different kinds of genres, right, as we make an infographic or a flyer. And we're navigating, and I love that phrase, we're navigating a set of power relationships as a member of a discourse community. We do that whether we're posting in Instagram photos of our food, sending crazy tweets like Brian does, sending links to fascinating content, or um, if we're just uh, chatting with our family and friends using text messaging. Right? So in some ways, the issues of digital authorship get complicated really fast because of all those different dimensions. So that really is why I'm kind of motivated to um, examine this topic through a multidisciplinary framework. And so a lot of people, uh, and a lot of, and over the years, I've used different disciplinary frameworks. This semester, we're really focusing on um, uh, youth media, which is a kind of subfield of media studies, um, uh, media studies and education. Those two themes, are, those two uh, disciplinary focus foci are kind of what we're exploring. Other semesters, we focused more on writing and rhetoric, right? Or more specifically on media literacy or media arts. Uh, but this semester, we're going to focus uh, looking more closely at what the scholars and practitioners in youth media and media studies and education have um, offered to offered to us. Um, so you're probably uh, aware of why, why you want to take the class and what you think you're gonna get out of it. Let's take a look at these learning outcomes. And, we've, and, and as, as, I, um, as I go through these, think about which ones of these are most important to you. Do you want to deepen awareness of yourself as a literate individual and reflect on your personal and social identity as an author? Do you want to gain knowledge about how changes in society and technology are shaping approaches to writing, media production, multimodal media composition, and media literacy in the context of K-12 and higher education? And in informal learning environments, including home, library, and community. Do you want to develop digital media production practices for learning uh, and use, learn to use free and low-cost platforms and tools? for a bunch of different purposes? Do you want to consider how authorship embodies ideologies about the relative value of creativity, identity, collaboration, authority, representation, power, and social action? Do you want to strengthen research, reading comprehension, critical reading and synthesis skills in your, for, for yourself as a learner? Do you want to deepen collaborative, collaborative organizational, problem solving, and leadership skills, working as a member of a production team? Or do you want to gain a broader appreciation of the role of scholarship and practice, praxis, fancy word for practice, as a member of a team? Okay, so let's just say you had to uh, pick the one that was most important to you. Your job right now is to find one of those tools that lets you make pictures or draw and just put a, just put a plus next to the one that's the most important to you.
How's that going? Oh, I see a couple of pluses. Oh, there's a red one. Fancy. <laughs> Love it. Anybody else want to weigh in? Okay, so why don't you talk us through your reasons for your choice? Who wants to go first? Whether you made an X marks a spot or not, which one rises to the top and why for you? Who's first? I can go. Thanks. Um, so I, for me, I did, I was very excited about finding my red color and I went with, um, for me, it was strengthening research, reading comprehension, critical reading and synthesis skills, um, and learning from text in a variety of genres and forms. And I just felt that for me in my role as both a reading interventionist and then a literacy teacher working with struggling on a daily basis, I felt like this was a great way for me to make some headway with my learners and try to reach them um, using different forms and different formats and try to meet them where they are. Uh, so that, I, there's a lot that's important, but for me, that was that really stood, stood up to me. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Who, that, gr thanks for sharing. Who's next? I'll go. Thanks. This is me. It uh, took me a while to find the drawing tool and figure out how to draw, but um, I did. And uh, I wrote digital, developed digital media production practices for learning uh, free and low cost platforms and tools for purposes of self-expression, communication and advocacy. Um, that, as I said in my introduction, I'm really interested in learning how to communicate more, doing some of my writing and um, uh, other expressive things online. So that's what I'm interested in. Great. Thanks for sharing. I'll hear from one more person. Which one is most important to you and why? I'll go. Thanks. Um, mine was, I did number two, gain knowledge of how changes in society and technology are shaping approaches to writing, media production, multimodal media composition, and media literacy in the context of K-12 and higher education. Um, I, I just feel like when I was in the classroom as a teacher, it, it's just we have to um, equip these kids with the tools to decipher these changes in communication that are coming at us and being updated and upgraded and evolving all the time. And if they can't think and think critically on their feet and, and, and understand what's happening, then they're not going to be equipped to, to deal with, with everything that they're faced with, whether that's formal or informal. Um, and I think that the informal piece, I think, is just as important because we do spend a lot of time um, with a variety of different types of media informally. It just is. It's just it, the way it is. We are. We are plugged in like crazy. It's 10 or 12 hours a day. I want to welcome uh, Antonio. Uh, I'm giving you a big wave and a shout out. Hi, thanks for joining us. Antonio is a, a frequent uh, 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 participant in the Media Education Lab projects. He's a media literacy scholar and expert himself. Uh, and I think you're not taking this class, Antonio, but you're, you're, you're checking us out and uh, listening in. And that's fantastic. Um, okay, so we're going through the syllabus, and um, you, what's really important to appreciate about graduate school is that you're doing this for your own, developing your own expertise and your own uh, interests, and that's, and being active in thinking about, like, what's in it for me, and how can I use this to my maximum advantage is a really good thing to be thinking about, because at every, everything you do in this class should tap into something that you perceive to be relevant and meaningful. And, and if it doesn't, then we have to figure out how to make changes so that it can be relevant and meaningful. Um, okay, so I do want you to um, get two uh, books for this semester, um, Create to Learn, which is my 2017 uh, a book, and a Copyright Clarity, uh, which is a timeless, uh, timeless, and thank God the law hasn't changed too much, uh, a book subtitled How Fair Use Supports uh, Digital Learning. You can see that I'm planning to donate the uh, royalty proceeds uh, to the National Association for Media Literacy Education. That'll be about $10, so it's not a great big donation. Um, but it will be important for you to be an especially critical reader because you're 
getting like a double dose of the author. And sometimes it's challenging to um, uh, kind of encounter uh, the author's weaknesses. But I'll tell you right now, I am really well aware of the limitations of both of these books. And I hope that you can uh, identify those and find the, some of the limitations of these, uh, of these arguments, because that will help me in my next project make the work better. So you are expected to engage in critical reading of these texts, and that's in part because you have the, the luxury and the weirdness of the instructor in the room with you. So the course philosophy, I'll let you read for yourself. One of the, the things that's really most important about it is that we are doing this as a team, right? We are an online community and you're not a solo player in this class. You are part of a class. We're learning from each other. We're gonna use video chat and threaded discussion and a whole bunch of other tools to create a learning community, even though we are spread out all over the place. We definitely are gonna exploit this idea that creating media is a powerful form of learning and you're gonna be making media this semester in so many interesting ways. And I think that that in itself will um, be a powerful experience for you. And that we always, we agree with John Dewey, you know, learning is a reflection on action. That's what he said and boy, simple as that sentence is it's taken me a lifetime to really understand what it means so we're gonna make stuff and then we're gonna reflect on what happened when we made it we're gonna engage in using digital platforms and tools and then we're gonna reflect on what we notice about using them so it's we're not just gonna be doing we're gonna be thinking and and reflecting as well um, now the work that you're going to share in this class is going to be shared in a public space on your own course blog. Your course blog can have a whole bunch of content of your choice, but it for sure is going to have your three media projects, your three leaps, and your final project as well. So in some sense, what you're creating is going to be a public, a set of public documents um, that are, that should have value to others, right? We are also going to be experimenting with using uh, closed conversations, including exploring having a dialogue on Facebook as part of a closed Facebook group and on Twitter as part of a public conversation. So we're gonna be exper experimenting and experiencing a variety of different ways of sharing our work with each other. And for sure there's gonna be some opportunities for collaboration. One of your three creative projects will be done collaboratively. And because it's a class where we're learning together, it's really kind of important to stay on pace with the work. Right. So I'm kind of expecting that you're going to devote about six hours or depends on maybe maybe six, maybe between six and nine hours to this course and make sure you have time to do the work because otherwise you're just going to be unhappy and that's not good. So schedule time where you sit down and do this work because uh, just showing up for the video chat, not much. <laughs> that, that You won't really get much out of the class. And it doesn't really matter how much technology skill you have. Many of these uh, tools might be new to you and you'll have the choice of using other tools that are not on this list. So if you're just a beginner and you've never made a podcast before, that's cool. If you're an experienced video producer, that's cool too, right? So uh, we're, we're all learning in our, our own life path, right? Um, so it looks like, um, this is a really important part to talk with you about three times during the semester, you're going to create media projects called leaps. The first leap is called critically analyze a mentor text. The second leap is called create media to demonstrate your learning. And the third leap is called digital storytelling. Okay. That, that's worth about 45% of the class grade. 
Then there's going to be smaller activities worth about 20 points a week that are basically reading and discussion or um, video chat experiences where we share ideas with each other through those practices, right? Uh, you're going to have some choice over which activities you engage in. So, so if, you, uh, if you get 20 points per week, that's cool. You may see that some weeks I'll put up a whole bunch of choices. Don't feel like you have to do them all. Choose the learning activities that are most meaningful to you, right? Sometimes that will, may give you the option to create a small media project or do some other kind of data collection or experimentation, right? Um, so, but realize that uh, we'll, we'll use the path right to manage those activities. So maybe I should show that to you now, right? We'll use the path right to manage those activities. So I guess let's just click on that tool. You guys have already gotten yourself there. It looks like this. And I guess I should open it as a learner so that uh, it looks like, so it looks like, give me a thumbs up if you can actually see the blue website that says digital authorship. Thumbs up. I see some thumbs up there. I gotta, I have to, I have to move this over and make sure I'm looking at all your thumbs are up. That's good. Um, so each week, um, a set of tasks are going to be presented to you and um, you can move through these tasks, right? And, oh, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the, um, you know, what's happening is the, uh, hmm, I'll go back here. The, uh, the Zoom is getting in the way of my learning. I wonder if I can minimize it a little bit. I'm going to try to minimize it. There we go. Um, yeah, got it. So you're going to experience this as a, a learner and see that right away, these are the five steps that I'd like you to engage in. We're doing this one already. And if you're here tonight, you get five points for participating in this, um, this synchronous class, uh, buying the books, introducing yourself, uh, telling me when the doodle poll is. Uh, I was really pleased. Uh, I saw that um, uh, I saw that uh, a couple of you have already introduced yourself on the Flipgrid, Ashley and Lynn, and I, I put up an introduction too. Um, so uh, this is a way for us to start to see each other as resources and see what we can learn from each other, right? So you click on these dots and you move through the activity. Each time you do, points are allocated. I noticed that many of you have already completed the doodle poll, and uh, we'll wait for another three or four more students to complete, but it's looking right now like Wednesdays at seven o'clock are kind of um, most available for people. If you haven't filled that out already, you might wanna do that. Um, and then, right away you're going to get started in the topics we're going to talk about for next week. Now, always and always the work that you're expected to do for the week will be due on Friday at the on the at the end of the week. Right? Because if you've got your, you know, self-organized, you want to do all your work during the week so you can have a real weekend. Right? So, even if we meet on Wednesday, the work itself will be due on Friday, and that's next Friday, February 1st. These are the things I'd like you to do. Notice how when you click on the thing, you're given the task. It says, read these few chapters, and then do something. In this case, it's, um, it's an activity called reflect on your identity as a digital author. Right. So the path right is a really simple and powerful way to like manage your time as a learner. But now I have to go back to the syllabus to talk about kind of the most important part of the course. We've talked about the three leaps. That's where you're going to get a chance to make some media. We've talked about the class participation. That's worth about 25% of the course grade. These are the readings and discussions and activities that we do as part of learning. But we haven't talked about the final project. That's worth 30% of the course grade. 
basically what you're going to be doing is designing and implementing a creative project or a research paper or a curriculum that you develop during the course of the semester. Uh, it's the topic is up to you, but as you can see, uh, it's best if you um, use this opportunity to develop your expertise in ways that advance your personal interests and professional career. Uh, and you can pick any topic you want, but it has to be somehow connected to the course, right? <laughs> Obviously. Uh, you can also choose to work by yourself or you can work with a partner, right? So that's cool. So you have a lot of freedom, but because you have so much freedom, uh, you have to focus on something that's doable in just six weeks, right? So if we look at the actual structure of the course, we move through a set of questions, right? And then at the very end, right, the last third of the class, you, right after spring break, woo, spring break, you have the opportunity to work on this final project for about four weeks, right? Really going through the process of figuring out what can you create that will be meaningful to you, that will help develop your expertise and um, document your, um, your learning journey, right? So, We'll be starting to talk and think about that early in the semester, right? But um, it'll develop as we go along, and you may find it useful to, um, well, if you're like me, you might find it useful to be jotting down some notes, right, during the semester about possible projects, right? Because you'll be reading something or thinking something and go, oh, I could do that. So be aware that the, um, the creative juices flowing are starting right now tonight. <laughs> right? So, so you might even get an idea tonight, right? So, but it's going to percolate and your project ideas are going to evolve as the semester goes and by about, mm, spring break, right after spring break, I'm going to ask you, tell me what you're thinking about doing. And you're going to have an idea and we're going to work together and talk about it together and shape it up. And it'll be something that you're really proud of and will really love. Okay, enough, of, enough about that. Now it's time to see what questions you have. What questions do you have about the learning experience this semester? Um, if anyone has any help with this i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sure i'm doing something wrong i keep getting denied from the facebook group and i don't know what my problem is <laughs> oh okay. the same thing happened to me when i tried to do it yeah oh, thank you okay yeah. <laughs> lauren and lynn i i wonder I, 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 I had the same problem too yeah me too. i'm kind of thinking that i might have to approve you right I, in my mind, I think this is one of those things where I have to go in and like unlock you. So I'm going to go in and diagnose the situation. I think I might need, I think I'm the problem. <laughs> so we'll, we'll investigate that. I'm glad you asked that question. What other questions do you have? I, I'll just say I didn't even try because it said that I needed an, a URI email. Ah, let me see about, let me investigate on that too, uh, Pam. Thank you so much about that. I had, I never thought about that, but you're right. That might be a challenge. Yeah. Other comments or questions that you have about the work this semester? I didn't look up the Facebook group yet either, but I'm assuming it's under our, our class number. Uh, yes, I think if you type in digital authorship into Facebook. Okay. So, and there's a link in the syllabus to it as well. Okay. And we're not going to use it right away. So w w when we get to it, uh, when we have reached that point in the semester, then we'll, we'll explore it in more detail. Okay. What other questions? Okay. Questions so, about the meeting? Say, say Kathleen? 
Um, I have a question about the meetings. Yes. Um, so I did the doodle poll. Um, unfortunately, I have plans for next Wednesday, but I'm available for any other Wednesday coming up. Um, is that problematic? And how do I make up for this interaction? I am so glad that you asked this question. The uh, dialogic space that we're creating right now with the Zoom is an optional activity. If you, um, I'm recording this right now, and so right after tonight's class, I'll upload it to YouTube, and then I'll link it back to the homepage digital authorship for the, under the getting started uh, page. So you'll always be able to access it um, and watch it afterwards if you want. And if you watch it afterwards and ask, answer a question that I'm going to post under there, you can even get the points. But it's not required. It's, um, it's a way to create community and it's, a, it's like the way I learn best. I'm a social learner. Like I can't, I have to like be connected to people or I feel like I'm, I just, I lose motivation, you know? So when I'm in a, a group, I, my motivation is higher. So, but it is optional, and so you shouldn't worry at all. If you can't participate, then that's cool, right? Thanks. So you'll do other things. I'm glad you asked that question because other people probably had that same feeling. But now, we're getting to, it's about 741, and I, I wanted to see if you guys could critically analyze the little video that I made to introduce the course, right? Maybe you saw it, right? So let me share my screen with you. And I was thinking you might have some comments about what you noticed about the choices that I made. Uh, and so let's see if I can go back and find, I guess I'll just open up a new tab here, digital authorship. I used that wonderful tool. Some of you from the Summer Institute remember uh, using this tool, Adobe Spark. And I didn't take much more than 15 minutes to create it, but I did make some choices. So as we watch this short video, I'd like to see if you can notice what choices did I make and with what effect. Okay, so we'll watch it together and then we'll see if we can talk a little bit about that. Give me a thumbs up if you can, or give me a verbal if you can actually see this page of the YouTube page. Just say I can yes. See it. yes. Yes, I can yes, see it. Yes. 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 Woohoo. Okay, good show. Thanks so much. Okay, let's watch it now. Okay, like that was fast, 42 seconds, but what did you notice? Um, can I, yeah. So uh, for me as an ELL, I'm, um, so English is my second language. I wasn't able to read uh, most of it mm -hmm. or get the idea. Um, I couldn't either and I read English. Oh. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Those words were presented on the screen. When I watched it at home, I was like, oh my God, I don't know what she's trying to say. <laughs> I can't get to the end of the phrases. <laughs> I got very good using the pause button. Yeah, I do use pause a lot too. Yeah. Okay, got it. So those words were going on the screen way too fast. Right. Because I didn't even think about that when I made it. I didn't even think about people reading those words. I just thought about writing the words. I was focused on what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about the reader and how the reader encountering those words for the first time might need more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Um, what else did you notice? 
I was, I, I, and I don't know if this is just part of how we all come from a different place as learners, but for me, the, um, the process and product jumped out at me. And I think it's because, you know, each, each person is going to bring a little bit of a different background. And so maybe they're going to see what most um, sparked something in them. So that really jumped off the page to me. And, and when you hear the phrase process and product, what does it mean to you? Um, I just think of this constant process of being a learner, both in my classroom and, you know, we talk about it with the, the students all the time, how we're constantly learning. And it's not always about the product. Sometimes it's just really about that process and how we change and evolve as we are learning. So mm -hmm. it's not really about what we create. It's what we right. learn through the process itself. Yeah, very okay. nicely put. Okay, what else did you notice about the little video I created? You use lots of different kind of background images. I did, I used a bunch of different kinds of background images. Any Kept, it, kept my interest, kept it interesting. Okay, so there was pacing, it was fast, it was too fast. It was fast, but it was too fast. But it used different types of images. Do you remember any of the images? Um, there were students uh, working. There was somebody with a camera. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of um, little um, paper kind of images yeah. that were all together on a grid. Yeah. The hands. The hands. Yeah. The messy hands. The messy hands. <laughs> the messy hands. And when you, when you think about the messy hands, what's that mean to you? Getting your hands dirty, getting in there. I think also you had paired it with some words on identity. So I think of that as like our fingerprint. You know, we're we're leaving, we're leaving a digital history behind. We're leaving a fingerprint. Nice. So let's talk about the music. What did you notice about how the music made you feel? That was the hardest part of the project for me, was picking the friggin' music. <laughs> it was kind of digital. <laughs> <laughs> like electronic, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I mean, yeah. Okay, so um, let's, it was fast. It was fast? Yeah. Okay, we're going to listen to the music once more because you guys weren't listening to the music. <laughs> we were too worried trying to read it. Okay, what, what, what feelings did you get from that music? What thoughts and feelings did you find yourself thinking about when you listened to that music? Soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that time it sounded a bit more like a gamelan <laughs> concert rather than electronic. Sort of Philip Glassy. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, does, what does that music have to do with digital authorship? Well, you chose it. You were the author. <laughs> and, uh, huh. I don't know. You so I, I was hoping that that music would make you feel not scared, <laughs> right? And that it would be a little bit anticipatory. <laughs> like uh, activating a little sense of wonder, you know, with all that... <laughs> Almost childish. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A little childish wonder. That's kind of what I was aiming for. Okay. So needless to say, I guess one of the reasons why I wanted to share with you a video that I made to introduce this course is to talk about this powerful idea that we are going in this class, we are going to be comfortable in bringing our work 
into a social space to talk about it, even though it's not perfect, it might not even be good, right? <laughs> and it might be full of weaknesses and flaws, right? Because oh. that's what this kind of learning demands, right? And you guys modeled exactly the right stance to take in that context, right? Because you offered your interpretations and your feedback in a way that was genuine, authentic, kind, right? And uh, genuine and authentic. And I feel like that's kind of what we do as uh, members of a discourse community, right? We're sensitive and appreciative, but we, we want to be authentic, right? And so that practice is going to be something that sometimes is going to feel a little bit risky, right? Because it's not that fun always to, to be like aware of the weaknesses in our own work and like still to have to share it. But in a way, um, that kind of um, openness and sensitivity is kind of what makes people active lifelong learners, right? So we're gonna try that for a semester and, and get some, build some muscles and get some practice at it. And our skins are gonna get a little thicker and we're gonna get a little more comfortable with the mess of imperfection. Um, and we'll learn a lot from each other that way. Okay, so we've reached the end of our class, our class, uh, our online class for tonight, unless you have any last minute words, suggestions, or ideas before I see you here. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it will be Wednesday at 7 p.m., but I'm, I'll, I'll send you an email because I want to be really respectful. It looks like not no day is perfect and it's such a hard thing to have to pick one of one day somebody's not going to be able to attend right but i'll confirm by friday of this week with you whether it'll be next wednesday at 7 p.m or if it'll be a different time right so you'll get an email from me one way or the other so what last minute questions or words of uh, inspiration do you have before i let you go so just to clarify, our week one things are due this Friday at a special time or just this Friday? So the welcome to the, oh, let me just go, let me go, I'm going to share my screen with you. So this Friday, you must do that first week welcome. So let's go back to the, um, you must do these activities welcome to the course activities this week by friday okay. and by next friday february 1 you must this is starting to do some real reading and some real real writing and for next friday you do these things right okay. and if you want to get ahead you can but sh i'm never going to let you get too far ahead right so thanks for asking that good question what other questions do you have so is it friday by midnight Yes, Friday by midnight. All right, thank you. Because I get I get home from school and I then I get to work on it. Exactly, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm burning the midnight oil as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, uh, other questions? Okay, so if you need to reach me in the most urgent way, most many of you know that the best way to reach me urgently is on Twitter because I am a Twitter holic, right? So if you want to reach me, you, you know you'll get an answer within three hours or two hours or even 10 minutes if you, if you tweet me a private message. That's the best way. You also can see my cell phone number is in the syllabus, and of course you can email me. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week, and um, hope you enjoy the cold. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Nice meeting you all. Thank you. Nice meeting you. See you, you. next week. <laughs> See you next week.